Hello students, welcome to EPG Patshala. In today's module, we will discuss about application of biosensor in environmental monitoring and recent advances. The contents of the module will be the aspects of environmental monitoring, few examples of heavy metal biosensors, pesticide biosensors, BOD biosensors, and finally, recent advances in biosensor development. So, first of all, we will talk about the environmental monitoring aspects of biosensors. As in recent years, biosensors have established a special niche in analytical tools. It has diversified its applications in the fields of drug discovery, disease detection, environmental monitoring, soil quality monitoring, food quality monitoring, toxins of defense interest, water quality management, prosthetic devices and various other fields. But in today's module, we will focus on environmental monitoring through biosensors. As we know, the recent industrialization and modernization of our environment has accumulated various pollutants around us. These include heavy metals, pesticides, phenolic compounds, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons and various other chemicals. Today, we will discuss about few examples of the biosensors developed for these pollutants. First of all, heavy metals. Heavy metals have a density more than 5 grams per cubic centimeters and there are 60 heavy metals in our periodic table. Some are essential for all life forms at very low concentrations, but few are toxic in very low concentrations and regarded as toxic heavy metals. They mostly behave as cumulative toxins. The accumulation of high levels of heavy metals in humans cause disturbance in nervous system, abnormal kidney and liver functions, damage to reproductive system and many metabolic deficiencies due to enzyme inhibition. The biosensors for heavy metals can be characterized depending upon the biocomponent employed. According to this categorization, we can categorize them in three classes that is protein based, whole cell based or DNA based. Protein based heavy metal biosensors can further be divided into three types. These are enzyme based, purified protein based or antibody based. Generally, antibody based heavy metal biosensors include monoclonal antibodies. In case of enzymes, two concepts are used for the development of biosensors. It is either the inhibition of the enzyme activity or the activation. Purified proteins include either the fusion proteins or the regulatory proteins. The examples of each category are shown in the slide. Then whole cell based biosensors can be divided into two main categories. First are those which include natural microbes which can respond against the heavy metal and others are those which are genetically modified to produce a measurable signal in response to the heavy metals. Here are the example of some enzyme based biosensors. As you can see that enzymes can respond to a number of heavy metals. So there is a limitation that they can't be used for development of specific heavy metal biosensors. But if we want to develop a biosensor for toxicity analysis, various kind of enzymes can be used. These includes alkaline phosphatase, pyruvate oxidase, lactate dehydrogenase, peroxidase, urease, etc. Here is an example of the development of an optical biosensor for the detection of cadmium. This is an enzyme inhibition based biosensor in which urease producing whole cells of bacillus badius has been used as the biocomponent. In this case, the biocomponent has been immobilized 
at the tip of a fiber optic to develop an optical biosensor. In this case, urease catalyzes the hydrolysis of urea into ammonium ions which leads to increase in pH of the system. This increase in pH has been detected by a pH indicator such as phenol red. The presence of cadmium inhibits the activity of urease and thus the change in color observed without the heavy metal is decreased in the presence of heavy metal. In control system, the color of the solution changes from yellow to pink, but this rate of color change decreases in the presence of cadmium. This whole principle has been developed to detect a very low concentration of cadmium through fiber optic tip. A detection limit of 0.1 microgram per liter has been achieved with only 10 microliter volume of the sample. The response time of this investigation was only 5 minutes. Here is an another example of recombinant based arsenic biosensor. Being a very toxic heavy metal, arsenic tends to accumulate inside the microbial cell. But every microbial cell contains a resistant mechanism which converts this arsenate into arsenide and extrude out the heavy metal. For this mechanism, an operon is operative inside the cell which is called as ARS operon. This ARS operon includes a regulatory gene which is ARSR gene and few structural genes. This ARSR regulatory gene produces a repressor protein which inhibits the expression of structural genes. But in the presence of arsenide, it attaches to the repressor protein and unblocks its repressor function leading to the synthesis of structural genes. This natural operon of microbe has been modified genetically to produce a heavy metal response. This natural model of microorganism has been modified to produce measurable signals in the presence of arsenide. In this case, the structural genes of the microbe has been replaced with certain reporter genes such as green fluorescent protein also called as GFP to produce fluorescence in response to arsenide or we can also use luciferase which produces luminescence or it could be replaced with LAGZ gene which produces color in response to the presence of arsenide. We would discuss about pesticides. Pesticides are substances or mixtures of substances intended for preventing, destroying or repelling any pest. Pests include insects, plant pathogens, weeds, birds, nematodes that destroy property and spread diseases. Many pesticides can be grouped into chemical families. But the prominent insecticide families are organochlorines, organophosphates and carbamates. Organochlorine hydrocarbons, for example, the famous DDT operates by disrupting the sodium potassium balance of the nerve fiber, forcing the nerve to transmit continuously. Their toxicities varies greatly, but they have been phased out because of their persistence and potential to bioaccumulate. Here is an example of amperometric pesticide biosensor. Generally, acetylcholine asterase enzyme is used as the biocomponent for pesticide detection. In this case, the enzyme acts on acetylcholine and produces choline. This choline is further degraded by choline oxidase into betaine and H2O2. The H2O2 or hydrogen peroxide produced 
can be easily detected amperometrically by applying a potential of 0.6 volt. This is the basic principle for almost all the pesticide based biosensor in which acetylcholine esterase is used as the biocomponent. In every case, the acetylcholine esterase is immobilized at the electrode surface to generate a target dependent response. As the bioassay principle indicated that higher the presence of pesticide in the sample, more will be the inhibition of the enzyme acetylcholine esterase and less of the hydrogen peroxide will be formed. So, as the concentration of pesticide increases, the amperometric signal or current decreases as illustrated in this figure. Another example of pesticide biosensor has been based on optical properties. Here, the same phenomena has been used, but the final output obtained is through an optical transducer. In this case, the production of hydrogen peroxide has been integrated with a quantum dot. The hydrogen peroxide has a ability to quench the fluorescence of this quantum dot. So, the presence of pesticide is directly proportional to the fluorescence of the quantum dot as higher amount of pesticide will produce lower amount of hydrogen peroxide which will ultimately reduce the quantum dot quenching. Next, we would discuss about biosensors developed for the determination of biological oxygen demand or BOD. BOD is the amount of oxygen needed by aerobic biological organisms in a body of water to break down organic material present in a given water sample at certain temperature over a specific time period. That means that the BOD levels of a water body tells about its pollution level. The biorecognition element used for the determination of BOD are mainly pure cultures or mixture of identified microorganisms. They could be induced microbial consortium or activated sludge or even thermally killed microbes which retain the activity for main oxidative enzymes. The pure cultures used for BOD detection generally comprise of bacteria such as bacillus or pseudomonas. Yeast such as Clapsilla, Candida, Cerasia or Saccharomyces has also been used. Yeast are the most preferable biological agents for BOD biosensors because of being tolerant to negative environmental factors. The microbial consortia are used in comparison to pure cultures to expand the range of oxidized substrates. Mostly, Two strains such as Trichosporium cutaneum and Bacillus lichenniforms are used together to extend the substrate specificity and stabilize a long term operation of the biosensor. Here is an example of Clark electrode based BOD biosensor. In this case, the dissolved oxygen content of the water sample is measured through this electrode. At the tip of the electrode, an oxygen semi-permeable membrane is attached to measure the dissolved oxygen content of the sample. And the process which used to took place 5 days can be done in few hours. As an advancement, the same Clark electrode based method has been converted into high throughput microplate method in which the whole Clark assembly has been miniaturized to micro wells and the same kind of principle can be applied to many samples at a time. Now we would like to discuss about certain recent advances in biosensor technologies which has expanded the application of biosensors. Biosensor development was initiated by enzyme electrodes. Then the integration of nanotechnology and microfluidics was followed. Now the channels of microfluidics has been replaced with 
paper based fluidics. Here is an example of heavy metal detection by paper based microfluidics. In this case, a Y shaped channel has been formed on specially designed papers which allow the free flow of liquid through the channels. In one of the arm of the Y shaped channel, the thioctic acid and thiogonine coated gold nanoparticle has been used as the sensing moieties. Whereas in the other arm of the Y channel, the sample is poured. The use of thioctic acid and thioguanine hair is to create an arsenic binding site at the surface of the gold nanoparticle. When these nanoparticles, in the absence of arsenic, these nanoparticles remain in the segregated form and gives a red color. Whereas in the presence of arsenic, because of the arsenic binding sites, all the gold nanoparticles get aggregated and converts into a blue colored solution. So this change in color from red to blue gives the direct indication of the presence of the heavy metal. Another advancement observed in biosensor technology is the integration of smartphones with biosensors. As the smartphones has been enabled with efficient cameras, these can be used as the optical transducer to measure the optical properties of the sample. Properties such as absorbance, reflectance, fluorescence, surface plasmon resonance, biochemiluminescence, Electrochemiluminescence can be monitored through these cameras. The only requirement in this case are some accessories which are required to place the sample close to the smartphone camera which can capture the absorbance or other optical properties of the sample. The most recent advancement in commercial biosensor is the development of Eye Health Smart Gluco Monitoring System. This device takes only 5 seconds and only 0.7 microliter of blood for glucose monitoring. A screen printed 3 electrode strip has been used as the sensing platform in this device. And this device can monitor, store and transmit the blood glucose level to our smartphone in zero time. At the end of the session, we will review what we learned. In this module, we learned about the various environmental pollutants such as heavy metals and pesticides and the biosensors developed for them. We learned that enzyme inhibition based biosensors are the major classes of biosensors developed for heavy metals and pesticides. We also learn that yeast are the preferable biological component for the BOD biosensors and that integration of paper based microfluidics and smartphone technologies are the latest advancements in the field of biosensor technology. Thank you.